That day, a friend told me, you shouldn't be doing these videos because you're an introvert tech. You should get your sales consultant to do it. He advised me. He is a well-meaning friend who means no harm, but I think in the society at large, there are a lot of misconceptions around introversion. The problem is that a lot of these myths become self-limiting beliefs for introverts. They think that they are an introvert, they cannot do sales, they cannot manage a team, or they cannot run a meeting and so on. Our team grew from two people, just me and my partner, to over 20 people strong, still growing every month, and there are a couple of lessons and coping mechanisms I learned along the way as an introvert that I'm sharing in this video. First thing is that introversion is misunderstood. Introversion is a personality and it has nothing to do with your skills. What is a personality? It is an inclination or a preference. I know some very good salespeople who are introverts. One of them is my financial advisor. He is very strong in his communication and analytical skills and I like how he analyzed the economy and break down financial concepts for me. I think that's why he became a top salesperson in his company. However, he has to meet up with a lot of people on a daily basis in his job which can be exhausting for him as an introvert. Being an introvert means that they prefer to spend time alone in their free time. They tend to recharge by reading a book, watching a movie, or going for a run, or doing any other solitary activities. On the other hand, extroverts prefer to recharge by spending time with friends. In fact, introverts and extroverts' brains are wired slightly differently. Introverts experience a lot of internal stimulations, whereas extroverts seek external stimulations. If you go to a noisy place, it gets very overwhelming for introverts because there's already a lot of internal stimulations going on in their brain. So introverts would avoid external stimulations and avoid going to places with a lot of people. So for example, from young, I am unable to study in places outside like in Mac or Starbucks because the noises and movements around me makes it very hard to focus. I keep getting distracted. I can only study at home. Coming back to my YouTube videos, I'm actually comfortable shooting this video because there's no external stimulation distracting me. Like no one is talking to me. I'm the only one solely providing the output here. It's not a problem. And what's more, speaking is a skill. Just like swimming or playing basketball, any skill can be honed by having lots of practice. Given that I've done a lot of videos now, I have practiced doing quite a lot of videos. So I'm quite okay, I hope. By the way, do subscribe to support our channel. We publish videos every week. Second myth is that you have to improve your weakness. During our early stages of our business, my partner and I had to do everything in the business. Operations, customer service, and sales. Because we do not have much capital to start with, I went for a lot of networking to search for potential clients to get our business going. Meetup groups, conferences, and BNI. I went for anything I can find. I was quite uncomfortable with networking, but not because I dislike people or dislike selling. In fact, I am very comfortable in selling because I believe we are helping people with our services. What makes me uncomfortable in networking working is specifically the small talks with countless people. There's a lot of touch and go communication with many people and I do not like it. As I found out, the reason comes down to the difference between introverts and extroverts once again. Introverts process thought internally whereas extroverts process thought externally. This means introverts tend to think things through before responding and we are not good at giving instant answers or doing impromptu speaking. Thankfully, my partner is much better at networking than me and we managed to get a handful of clients and build up some budget to do digital marketing. And that really propelled us forward in a big way. Reason being is that I was playing in my strength zone. I could easily spend 2 hours to 4 hours to craft a well thought out ad message to speak to our target audience online as compared to having to think of something to say on the spot within 2 seconds. The ad copies worked really well and the client who found us online said that our ad copies are different. It's not the typical ads they see on Facebook newsfeed that looks like annoying sales pitch like grow your business 10x or make 10k a month etc. We stood out on the newsfeed because a lot of thought and research goes into the ad. Suffice to say, internet is the saving grace for our company, it took us to the next level. At the end of the day, you have to know yourself well. If you are good at something, focus on it. Work with someone else that compliments you and makes up for your weakness. Thirdly would be on building a team. Besides getting customers, another aspect that might be terrifying for introverts would be building a team and managing people. If you are anything like me, you might have some limiting beliefs about people. You feel that building a team is scary because people are tricky, people are complicated and people are hard to manage. 
and consciously or unconsciously, that was what held us back from building a team for years. It was just my partner and I and the business for more than two years, I believe. At first, when customers started coming in, we tried to cope ourselves and then we couldn't. So we outsourced a fair bit of the work to get it done. Eventually, it was even more work for me because I had to redo everything that came from the freelancers. We tried working with different freelancers or companies, but it just wasn't working out. They had their own way of doing things and were unable to follow our methods. They were also not committed to our mission and belief. Out of circumstances, we decided to get past our limiting beliefs and start hiring in-house and building a team. Many people think that they have to be like Steve Jobs to lead a company. They have to be charismatic, outgoing and extroverted in order to galvanize their people, customers and grow their company. Here's the thing, extroverted leaders get a lot of attention and media coverage because they are extroverts. There are a lot of companies run by introverts that are doing very well but don't get a lot of attention. For example, Google founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin are very low profile introverts but they have built Google into one of the biggest companies in the world. Introvert and extrovert leaders both have their strengths and weaknesses. For example, while Apple revolved around the genius Steve Jobs, Google is all about collaboration. Introverts tend to listen more and talk less and that has created the culture of Google. Many of the innovations under the umbrella of Google, such as Google Map, Gmail, Google Drive, all came from their employees, not the founders. This is a result of a collaborative culture. The thing is that both styles of leadership can work but the problem happens when we as introverts try to be someone else that we are not. We pretend to be Steve Jobs. That will not work out because people can see through us, they can see through our insecurity and that will create a culture of pretentiousness and deception within the company. Everyone will be wearing a mask pretending to be someone they are not. The management sends a message via their action. You have to be yourself so that everyone can be themselves too. If you are an introvert, I want to leave you with three very important tips. Firstly, Give yourself time to think. If someone asks you something on the spot, you don't need to rush into an answer or decision. Think through it first and you will come up with something great. However, do not overthink. We have a tendency to overanalyze things which can lead to analysis paralysis. Set aside an amount of time for thinking, nothing more and nothing less. You may want to write down your thoughts or use cost-benefit analysis or any framework to clarify your thinking. It will be faster. But once you reach a conclusion, that's it. Do not overthink. Second tip, you have to communicate. During COVID period, if you remember, everyone was stuck at home. Remote working became the norm. I made a wrong assumption that people are like me, that they like working alone by themselves without communication. And that's wrong. Communication is important. Without communication, people become distant, disconnected, and therefore demoralized. They make wrong assumptions. They think that you hate them or that company is dying. They go on a negative spiral and so on. We have to communicate and we have to communicate in person as much as possible. Sure, internet is great and whatnot, but not everything can be done via messaging or emailing. Human touch is still very important. This is something that introverts have to bear in mind. Thirdly, don't avoid working with people. If you want to achieve anything meaningful, you have to work with people. Once you work with people, you realize that there are people who are amazing and awesome and they're smarter than you think. The problem is when you work with people with the wrong values, your life began to suck. I learned this the hard way. Which is why to maintain our sanity, our company has a strict hiring process to ensure that we bring in the right people. You may have worked with the wrong people in the past, but there are a lot of good people out there. You just have to find them. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you are introvert or extrovert. It's just a personality or preference. It's not an indication of ability or capability. You can do anything you want as long as you put in effort. So don't let the limiting beliefs stop you. Thanks for watching this video. Do like, subscribe and press the bell notification so that when new videos are released, you will be notified. I'll catch you soon.